Hi, welcome to the second video of Ignite the Spark series. And in today's video, we will explore something called distributed computing. So without further delay, let's jump in. We all want to work with Spark, but it will be interesting to know what principles the framework is built upon. And that's where distributed computing comes into picture. Now, to give you an example about distributed computing, I mean, not an example, uh, let's pick up something that you can relate to. So let's say you're working for a library and this library has several rooms. Imagine there are like 10 rooms and so many books. And let's say you have to find a book with a particular title. Say, for example, Atomic Habits. Now, one thing that you can do is you have 10 rooms. Uh, you can have somebody to go to each room and search for the title. Now, let's say this take around one hour to search within one room. Now, it will take for the person to uh, re search the entire library. It will probably take somewhere around 10 hours, right? Because each room takes one hour. Now, at the same time, let's say you have 10 people who are searching for this atomic habits at the same time. So each person is searching within one room. Now, collectively, this will take one hour to complete the task. So what exactly happened here? You divided the work and then instead of one person doing it, 10 people did it parallelly at the same time. Now, this made your work faster and, and that's how it is, right? So, so this idea is called distributed computing. So basically in distributed computing, uh, rather than depending on one machine, or one piece of compute to do your job, you divide your job and distribute among multiple entities. Now, distributed computing goes long back, but uh, with respect to big data and all, it started becoming very popular in the early 2000s, right? Even if you look at the uh, framework such as Apache Hadoop, which is the first framework that solved the big data problem, Hadoop was built on the principles of distributed computing. That means in a Hadoop system, there will be always more than one machine in a production scenario. And any job or any program you, that you write on top of Hadoop, it will be distributed among multiple machines and they will parallelly do it, right? And when it comes to Spark as well, it follows this idea of distributed computing. And it makes sense, right? I mean, if you look at any real world scenario um, and you talk about data processing, the size of data or the amount of data that you need to handle will be really huge. I mean, look at all these use cases, e-commerce, banking, hospitality, anything that you pick, right? Let's pick e-commerce, e for example. So look at the amount of data a company like Amazon has to deal with. Now, if you want to use a framework like Spark to process it, it doesn't make sense that one machine is going to process the whole data. Instead of that, you divide your work among multiple machines and then coordinate. So that is the idea of distributed computing. And let's also see how it works. Okay, so now let's take our understanding one step further. We understood on a very high level what's distributed computing system, right? Now let's say you want to work with Spark. So typically in a production environment, what is going to happen is that you will be creating something called a Spark cluster. Now you may not be creating it. I mean, typically what we see is that there will be admin teams or networking teams or infrastructure teams they will be responsible for creating a Spark cluster. So what is a Spark cluster? Very simple. It is a group of compute nodes, right? So you can see here, there is an example. There is a cluster and it has 12 machines inside them. What are these machines? They are either servers or they are computers or they are machines in the cloud. You know, each one has a CPU, RAM and a hard disk. <laughs> And each machine is called a worker node in Spark's terminology. So the idea is very simple. Let's say you want to run a Spark program. It has to be executed by somebody, right? And we just saw that distributed computing means typically using more than one machine, right? So your organization will have a Spark cluster where there will be multiple machines who are interconnected and they will act like a single system. So that's called a cluster. Right now, the important point you need to remember is that 
the cluster will have multiple machines and each machine will have CPU, RAM, hard disk and they will be interconnected, right? So these machines will be interconnected. Now, what you do is you will write a Spark program and you will submit the program to the cluster so that it can be executed and then the program will run. Now, another question naturally that might come into your mind is how many machines will be there? I mean, I don't know, depending on the project, you may have 10 machines, 100 machines, 1000 machines. I don't know, right? You want more processing for power, more faster processing, add more machines. And that's the beauty of distributed computing as well. There is no fixed rule like you should have 10 machines only, 100 machines only, right? You can have as many machines as you want. The more machines you have, it will be a costly setup. Obviously, cost you need to consider, but processing will be faster. Now, the million dollar question here will be, okay, Raghu, you are saying that Spark runs in a cluster, that's nothing but group of computers and any processing that happens inside the cluster will be done by all these individual machines. Like in my example, there are like 12 machines, right? Now, what if one of the machine fails? Okay, who will take responsibility? Or who will take responsibility to combine the results? See, 12 machines are you know, running the program, whatever you wrote, right? Now, at the end of the day, you want all the result to be in one place. So who will take care of like collecting all these individual outputs from different machines and dumping it in one place? Who will manage the backend or running of all these things? And that's where the beauty of a framework comes into picture. Remember, Spark is a framework right? So Spark will take care of all these things so that you don't have to worry, right? You or me, we are developers or we are analyst people. We just want to write our program, see the result. Where do we have time to go pick each machine? Hey, are you talking to the next machine? Where is my data? Are you sending it? Are you not sending it? It's a nightmare if you have to do it, right? So we, we are not bothered about it or we really don't have time to bother about it, right? <laughs> if you were to manage the entire cluster, including networking, machine configuration, which machine fails, which machine comes back online, then probably you will stop learning Spark at this right point, right? Even I would do the same. So that's where the beauty of a framework comes. The beauty of any framework, including Hadoop and Spark, is that it hides the complexity for you. So the framework is kind of like an abstraction, you know, you just talk to Spark, it will take care of everything behind, right? So even though the principle is distributed computing, and it is a tough job to run these uh, programs among multiple machines and manage them, that will be handled in the backend. So for a developer, for an analyst, we care only about few things. Is Spark installed? Yes, it is installed. And how big is my cluster? Because the, I mean, bigger the cluster, more processing power you get. And do we have the knowledge of the Spark APIs to write the program? So now going forward, you will see how to write a Spark program and you will see that it is pretty simple and straightforward. All you write is read the data, filter it, group it, sort it, save it, right? Where is the cluster? Where is the machines talking to each other? right? <laughs> Nothing. I mean, so those complexities are all hidden and managed by the framework. That's why the framework is important. I believe that people should give more credit to a framework because people just say, oh, no, Spark is Spark. You know, it just, no, it, Spark is not just Spark. It does so many things in the back end. And that's why it is popular. Not only Spark, even if you look at Hadoop or Flink or any big data processing framework, the reason why they are so good at what they're doing is they simplify your life and they handle all the complexities in the back end. Okay, I think we should not go too deep into this. Now, if you really uh, talk, talk, talk about it, you may be probably wondering what is the criteria that you decide to increase the size of a cluster, right? Or how the data is divided. When you say, you know, the program runs parallelly, the data is also divided, right? How does it divide? Who divides? I mean, there are so many complex things to understand. And at this juncture, probably I don't want to get into too much details because this is a course which is intended for absolute beginners. But if you are interested to learn more about Apache Spark, 
all the nitty gritties and all then we have a lot of other options and resources as well okay so i think you got a basic idea about distributed computing and that's it thank you i hope you really enjoyed this short video so if you like the content then please consider subscribing to our channel in case if you have not done so and click on the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever we upload any tech content thank you